Welcome to the Mom and Dot 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 podcast. We're your hosts, Suzanne Kearns and Missy Stevens. We want to help you through everything that happens in the ellipses, from your professional life to your emotional health. You're a mom and so much more. Let's figure out what comes next together. Welcome to the Mom and Dot 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 podcast. I'm Suzanne Kearns, a mom and Dot 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 writer, LGBTQ advocate, and this week, teenage sleepover hoster. So excited. Yay, back yes. to life. Well, watch out. The last time we hosted a teenage uh, sleepover was the day before the lockdown. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't curse us, please. <laughs> knock on, I'm knocking on wood. So, and I'm Missy Stevens, mom and dot, 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 writer, child advocate, and this week, a recently elected booster club president who doesn't know what she's doing at all. So y'all, we have our first return guest. Yay. So exciting. Oh, yay. Yeah, long enough to have a returner. I know. Uh, our guest today is my dear friend and coach extraordinaire, Jenny Remington. She is back with us to talk about habits today. Jenny is a mom and dot, 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 professionally trained and certified coach with the International Coach Federation. She has empowered hundreds of professionals, entrepreneurs, and parents to reignite their career, discover their path, or realign their life. Jenny has a gift for bridging the personal with the professional and encourages her clients to embrace self-care. And we are so excited to have you here. Yeah. We have been itching to have you back since, um, for anybody who's been listening since the since the olden days back in January and February, <laughs> um, you know that Jenny walked us through identifying and understanding our strength finder results. Mm -hmm. So we got this. Well, that was episode number eight. Um, so you definitely want to go back and give that a listen. That was really, and you know what? One of the things that came out of that, even though we're not going to talk a lot about strengths finder, Jenny, is I've been noticing so much, especially a lot of the administrators at the school district um, are listing their five strengths. It, like it's in their uh, auto signature. And I've been That's seeing awesome. that. Yeah, I've been seeing that more and more. And I'm like, I know what those mean now. So yeah, definitely go and listen to episode eight. Super and cool. then we also turn that into an episode nine because we went as we tend to do a little long because we started talking about habits and we got really into that discussion but we then we had to cut ourselves off because we didn't quite have enough time so we promised we would bring jenny back and we have done that and this is the perfect time to be talking about habits because a mm -hmm. lot of us i'm going to speak for myself today was my very first day of kind of being the mom I was a year ago, like, you know, <laughs> having to shuttle one kid to an event, you know, the fifth grade graduation mm -hmm. event, while I'm trying to arrange this sleepover for my daughter and, you know, doing all these things. Do I need to go buy a cake mix? Or am I going to Costco to get snacks? It's like, so all these things where automatically, mm -hmm. like, as soon as I got even the slightest bit of green light, all of a sudden, I'm like, Let's do everything now, which I'm guessing is not the best habit to start for myself. So just want to talk to you, you know, about about those habits and, and yeah. what we can do in summer break that's going to make fall easier for us. <laughs> <laughs> Totally. Well, first, thanks for having me here and having me back. And it's so nice to be in my closet talking to women, to, yes. to everyone. And actually, I had to hide in my closet because I'm having a sleepover. There's there's a few extra kids at my house. There's there's extra Remingtons running around. So, um, so I'm glad to be here and be back. And you know, you know, when you were talking, Suzanne, at the beginning, what came to mind was complexity is back. Right. So COVID mm -hmm. times really simplified things for a lot of us. Yep. Like you didn't have the choice of, are you going to do this sport or this sport? No sports. You didn't have the a lot of the choices mm -hmm. that we make that, that fill up our days and fill up our time um, were taken away from us. And so the complexity is back for many of us. And so with that, you know, and I'm seeing this in my, in my coaching practice, I'm seeing this in my own life and I'm seeing it in conversations with friends is that we're back to, it's like we jumped back into the deep end of the pool, mm -hmm. but now we have this really fresh awareness that it didn't have to be this busy, didn't have to be this complicated. So, um, so I think that it's a great time to be talking about this at the beginning of summer and kind of yeah. the beginning of many families, not all families are ready to open up, but a lot of families are. Um, and there's tons of changes happening right now. I mean, 
kids getting out of school, kids are graduating, people are starting to travel further, further from home, or mm-hmm. at least imagining it. Yeah. Um, yeah. What else? Kids are coming home from college or kids that never left are being kicked out to apartments. These are just yeah. <laughs> some of the things that as I was looking at, okay, what are the transitions and the changes that are happening right now in the lives of the people that I coach? There's a lot of new schedules. And with that, yep. there's kind of this holding on of, okay, there were some good things with COVID times, that's before times that we, <laughs> um, that we want to hold on to. And so how do we do that? I think is a great, great question to ask. Yeah. It feels really overwhelming because COVID was super overwhelming and I hate, I hate to keep taking it back to COVID. I feel like we do in a lot of our episodes, Mm but that's a huge part of our world Mm -hmm. and there's no denying it. So we were really overwhelmed and everything came to a halt and our lives changed pretty drastically. And I feel like personally, we just hit our stride as a family of settling in and this is how we're doing life. And Mm -hmm. one was at school and one was at home. And I know you had virtual learners. Suzanne has had virtual learners and we just kind of got into it and we had some activities, but not a lot of activities. And now the world is opening up. We're fully vaccinated. Our kids are half vaccinated. We're on our way to all of us being fully vaccinated. School ended. Their summer schedule is pretty busy especially Mm -hmm. compared to last summer. Mm -hmm. And it's just, it's a lot. And I think whether you work at home or work in an office or stay home full time or some combo of the above, it's just a tough transition time. And so I like hearing you say that I'm not alone. Like I'm not alone Mm -hmm. in this feeling, am I? (laughs) For sure. For sure. And I imagine, you know, we can't see your listeners, but I imagine that they're nodding heads too, Mm -hmm. right? Like me too. I'm, you know, feeling overwhelmed. I I would like to to pick and choose what Mm -hmm. comes back into my life and not just be kind of thrust into all of it all at once. Right. And I think that that's really, you know, what's most essential is first getting clear. You know, we, you, you brought up the topic of habits at the beginning. First, we have to get clear on what kind of lifestyle we want. Mm -hmm. The habits support a lifestyle. Oh, I love when you write stuff down. I know I'm writing it down. Sorry. (laughs) um, I mean, and we're just talking here. We're just girls talking, but I I mean, it's important to, to, for sure, think about, okay, what are the habits that I want to maintain? If, if you've developed some great habits over, over COVID right. times, well, let's just start with that. Let's use that as an example. So what are some of the good habits that you guys have had? Um, since it sounds like that's really important. What are some of the ones you've had over COVID times that you want it to remain and keep going? Yeah. Like since we first talked to you and I brought up that I had slacked on exercising, you helped me reframe that mentally. And mm-hmm. I'm a daily exerciser now. But my daily exercise time was during, (laughs) right? It's amazing. Um, It was during school hours and I don't have school hours anymore. And my mornings are nuts and my afternoons have been podcasty and Mm -hmm. like, I, that's undone. What about you, Suzanne? Oh, I think one of the things, and we were doing this before, but I think it's just become extra special now is our dinner times together. And so i And I think that's going to become harder, especially now that, oh my God, we finally got Zoe scheduled to go get her uh, learner's permit for driving. But, you know, we're probably about six months away from her having a car and being able to go at a Mm -hmm. moment's notice on her own. So that's going to change things a lot and being busy at school. And, you know, she's even looking at getting a job. And so you know, that we're not necessarily going to have that dinner time, that special Mm -hmm. time together anymore. So trying to figure out what habit can we build around family time that doesn't necessarily have to be connected to a, you know, a specific meal. meal. Um, So that would be one that I would really want to, I mean, we've got, we've got our little brother trapped for a couple more years. (laughs) (laughs) Um, But yeah, Yeah. just that special time together. And I guess it's just that that kind of falls under the umbrella of just family together time. Yeah. Um, whatever yeah. that would be. Well, Suzanne, you just asked a perfect coaching question. So I'm going to reflect it back to you. You said, yeah. what habit can we build around family time? Right. So instead of saying how, you know, I can't get dinner time. And I'm like, for those of you on the, the podcast, and I'm gripping my hands instead of being like, I wanted family time to be the way it was. Instead, what is it you're really going for is family time. 
connection mm -hmm. with your family. And so the habits around connecting, it sounds like are gonna have to shift because family time, when we're all locked together at 6 p.m. and that's when everyone gets hungry, yeah. family time happens around the dinner table. But if family time can be more flexible, mm -hmm. then your question around what habit can we build around family time speaks to the lifestyle you wanna have. And mm. so what I would say yeah. is rather than digging our heels in and saying, I want the habit of family, I mean, I want the habit of family dinner time. I'm sure many people do, but instead of right. digging our heels in on one particular habit that maybe our lifestyle doesn't really support right now, mm -hmm. going to the higher level of the lifestyle, I want a connected family. So what are some of the habits I build around connected family? Mm-hmm. And oh, so instead yes. of, in, yeah, so that's part one. And then part two might be, okay, so a special dinner, maybe that becomes once a week. A maybe week, that yeah. becomes once a month or, you know, it's family night dinner becomes Sunday evening instead of an every day. And so we don't lose it completely, but it shifts. Mm -hmm, yeah. And so you, yeah, so you can hold on to what you want and, but it's really got to be our habits have to support our lifestyle. We can't be so attached to our habits that they tell us what to do. We we get to decide how we spend that time. Yeah. And so now yeah. I know that I may be trying to I, I can see myself being like, OK, we're going to do this Sunday dinner, whatever, and not getting the input from the rest of the family where I'm thinking in order to make it like a really a special thing. time that is actually enjoyed by all that there should be a family discussion and not just me being like, what are my priorities to do? So like, how That's, does that? Yeah. How do you uh, advise people to get that input? I'm sure my kids don't want to sit down and have a, you know, a one hour brainstorm necessarily, but just like, how can I uh, solicit that information from them as far as, okay, what would be valuable to you? What's realistic mm -hmm. with your schedule and the things that you envision, you know, what's, what mm -hmm. is your vision for next year? They probably don't even know what they don't know right now. It's been so yeah. long and yeah. this will be the first time Zoe's been going to her school while living in the neighborhood of her school or even yeah. anywhere close to it um, and yeah. being able to have a true community there. So uh -huh. she doesn't even know what that looks like probably. Right. Yeah. For a lot of our high schoolers, that's uh, most high schoolers, I think, maybe I'm wrong, but I think most of them, if they had the choice, stayed home this year. Yeah. Because it's perfect for high school, honestly. <laughs> like it was a great life for them. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. And mine is pretty introverted. So he got to go out a couple times a day for practices and he was great being home the rest of the day and he handled classes fine. It was perfect for him, but he's going to school next year, come hell or high water. And they all are. So yeah, they don't even know what they know, don't know. I think that's a great point. They don't know what school is yeah. like. I mean, he couldn't tell me what it's like to be a high schooler. Yeah. 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 We could give them some pointers on what it's like to do high school way back then, but it won't be relevant <laughs> and they won't believe us. But no, exactly. Suzanne, you're, I love your question about, you know, how do we get input from our people? Mm -hmm. So <laughs> this is where another place where I'm going to kind of offer up two ideas. So one is we maybe have a conversation and, and it may be around the family dinner table and it mm -hmm. probably should start with gratitude. It should probably start with, mm -hmm. I have loved this experience of eye to eye, face to face, heart to heart with you guys around food. I like, I like feeding you. I, you mm -hmm. know, so, you know, really yeah loving up um, and acknowledging that this has been a special thing. And so, so initiating a conversation from a place of, of gratitude and curiosity would be, you know, if, if, if your people are willing to talk, that would be one way you might do that. The other thought, the other side of this is, you know, and, and I remember reading this, like in the baby books that I used to read, like religiously when my, you know, like when the kids were actually yeah. babies um, <laughs> is, you know, what kids thrive on is routine and they resist things that are new and unfamiliar, but they really, it, it helps settle their nervous systems when they, they know what's coming and what's the routine. Yeah. And sometimes, I mean, I'm going to tell it uh, to a couple moms, moms know best. So yes, Let's get the input, but let's also from a, the place of wisdom as mothers of these children who are about to be launched into the world in the next few years, we might know best that a family, maybe it's family breakfast, not family dinner, or maybe mm -hmm. it's, it's something else. Maybe we cook a meal together that, and then we, you know, kind of go our separate ways, but having some kind of family ritual that 
maybe they can just count on it. There may be some grunt, you know, grunty groany stuff there. If there's grunty groany stuffs around every house. Um, and so, <laughs> no. you know, like if, if you're getting what you want out of it and connection is the goal and they can count on knowing that the habits that you're building are around family time. And because we want to be connected, I mean, there'll be times where it feels like more of a, a pain than not, but if the overall goal is connected family, then sometimes mom knows best. And, you know, if you're Mm -hmm. up to experimenting and, you know, can have a thick skin and can deal with some, some, you know, chatter from the peanut gallery, then it might be, (laughs) might be worth, that might be an experiment worth running, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. Yeah. No, that makes a lot of sense. Okay. Yeah. I feel like you're giving me hope. You're giving me hope. I know. And it applies to our personal stuff too. I think like the sitting down and saying, what is it I want out of my lifestyle for my work and my Mm -hmm. family work balance, whatever it is for me. And then having that conversation with anybody you need to have the conversation with. So maybe I need to talk to Mark about this is Mm -hmm. what I need summer to look like. These are the good habits I've built. These are the bad habits I see myself slipping into. I mean, school got out Thursday. Yeah. Yeah. Thursday and it's Wednesday. Mm -hmm. So I mean, we haven't been at it very long and there was a Memorial Day weekend in there and we went out of town and every it's not normal yet, but I can already see myself like being sucked into the, I'm driving this person here and that person there and then my time is gone. And yeah, so, yeah. Well, so a, there's a real scarcity thing. around our time when, mm-hmm. when we're just trying to squeeze in self-care and our good habits among yeah. everything else that's happening. And that's kind of yeah. what I'm hearing. So what I would say is, yeah, I mean, first getting clear on what you want and acknowledging how you want to feel about it, Mm -hmm. right, is really important. I mean, it's super hard to build habits and build a lifestyle. Well, actually, it's it's easiest to just go with the flow. It is so easy. And if you just go with the flow, if you just kind of like drop in, you imagine yourself in the lazy river of, you know, just kind (laughs) of like, I'm just going anywhere the wind, you know, the waves push me. Mm -hmm. That's easy. It is harder to decide I'm going there and pushing against the current. Mm -hmm. And so we do need to talk to the people in our lives and say, you should know about this. This is important to me. And, you know, your example of moving your body, um, I would say, check in with your body. Maybe your body's needed a rest. Maybe one week of taking a break during vacation, Memorial Day. Maybe that's, maybe that's not a sign that Missy's off track. Right. Maybe that's a sign that this is a busy week and when Missy's body is ready to move and Missy's mind is ready to to get it into gear. Get it back there, yeah. It can go get in. So I think I would just encourage you to to be real compassionate with that too and not just jump into, well, this is a sign of, you know, that I'm not doing it and the habit's off track. No, it's a sign of a busy transition period and maybe a sign that, you know, we're going to have to rethink how the hab- that particular habit fits into your life. It may, it may need to shift time. It may need to shift, like Suzanne's mm-hmm. example, it may be, you know, needs to shift the way it looks, um, but the overall goal of moving your body can still happen. And so right. how do we make that happen? And yeah. so Missy, I'm curious, since we're both Enneagram nines, that kind of going mm-hmm. with the current didn't you, didn't your brain light up when she said that? Yes. Cause I mean, yeah. is, is that how, that's kind of just how I go through life. I mean, that's how, mm-hmm. I mean, schedule wise. Cause I just feel like I was not this way before children. I feel like I had to make myself this way to keep myself from going completely crazy when you had no control right. of schedule. Like if someone mm-hmm. yeah. ended up getting sick and then you had to reschedule everything else around that. And so I've yep. really trained myself to just be like, well, I'm ready for anything. Like literally <laughs> if two kids break legs today, okay, we're ready to we go. Got it. Like that's, <laughs> yeah. And so I don't know if that's a mom thing or if that's just a personality type. Like I said, I wasn't that way in my career. In my career, no. I was very much like, no, we're doing mm-hmm. this, we're doing this. Um, but so I think I've really gotten out of that habit or that mind space of Mm -hmm. setting goals because I have felt so out of control of my schedule or my destiny for so long. But I think if we, we are in a place, we've both got these old kids now, like, and I think a lot of our listeners are in that place now. We're like, okay, no, it is time for us to remember that we can aim for shore or aim for that other beach and not <laughs> right. just kind of like cruise along, you know, waving at it as we go by. Um, yeah. 
So how, what's a good first step for kind of just retraining your brain that that's even a possibility? I, yeah. Okay. Huge topic. I love it because <laughs> so what's the first step is, I mean, really it's, it's getting clear on what you want and why you want it. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, and I, I'm sure every, every book on personal development, every book on habits, you don't just start by doing the thing. You first mm-hmm. start by making yourself crystal clear on why you want it, why you want that thing, why you want it. And so, yes. you know, then, mm-hmm. then it's easier, for example, if it's making time for something that's important to you, like, you know, r- a writing project or exercise, or, you know, kind of getting back into your career, building more skills. When we're clear, not on just on, I want to build more skills, or I want to move my body. I'm clear on, I want to move my body with less pain. I want to build these skills because I want to change careers. Like when we connect it to the bigger why, Mm -hmm. it makes it so much more important and it makes it more irresistible because we can say no to, well, I just don't want to go for a walk today, Mm -hmm. but it's so much easier to say yes to things when we know why we want it. So the first step is for sure getting clear on what you want and why you want it. The next step is really checking in with your body. Like, am I, am I feeling drawn to this? Where's the fear? What's holding me back? Do I need to have some new boundaries and some deep conversations with the people I care about that care about me that get in my mm-hmm. way? Yeah. Um, so knowing what's important is, is always going to be first because it's really hard to make changes that stick without being super clear on, on why. Mm-hmm. Oh. Right. And I've noticed yes. in yes, yes, my yes. life in the past, like I'll, I'm easily swayed. And I think that's some of my personality type is that I'm very easily swayed by whoever is making the best argument at the time. So if I read an article that's like, not just, you need to get good sleep, but the best sleep schedule is X. I don't, yeah. I'm like, well, then I've got to be going to bed at this time and waking up at this time. I don't even take into account how my body works. Yes. And so to take, really have that that conversation with me and think about what do I want? Well, I want seven to eight hours of sleep. Why do I want it? And then what, what is it? What's my body telling me about when I need to go to sleep and wake up? And of course, then you have to work that in with all your other people that you're responsible (laughs) for. But but that comes next. That comes next. We you're right. So checking in with your body is it's like a novel idea, but that's really yeah. where we should start. So we can get mm-hmm. advice from all kinds of different experts. You can hear right. things, but until you've checked in and see if it rings true for you, then it, it, it's just information. It is mm-hmm. not useful right. to you until it's kind of, again, I'm going back to, I see all my baby, baby books here on the closet <laughs> shelf. Um, just, but thinking back to baby times, you know, somebody might give you advice on the best sleep schedule for your baby, right? Yeah. You might've tried as you could to get your baby on the ideal sleep schedule. And at some point, every mom's like, throws that out the window and says, yeah. I know my baby better than this book knows my baby. I'm going to trust their body. Trust me. We need to do that same kind of listening for ourselves, Mm -hmm. you know, for, for your example, Missy is we need to listen to our bodies, listen to, you know, like what information we're getting, you know, are we getting sick? Are we, are we needing rest? Like we need to pay attention to those cues Mm -hmm. and let that inform how we're active in our life. There's something else you guys said that I don't want to, I don't want to skip over you. Um, when I said go with the flow, I saw both of you light up. So I was curious about <laughs> yeah. that. And, you know, one of the things that might be really helpful for people who do like to go with the flow around habits is um, I'll call them pivotal habits. For me, pivotal habits are the one where if I do this habit, a lot of other good things happen. So like, yeah. for example, in my life, if I just eat a salad, nothing else will change. It's other than I ate a salad. If I exercise in the morning, I will eat better. I will drink more and I will go to sleep on time that night. Exercise for me, for my body at this age and stage is a pivotal habit. Mm -hmm. So lots of good things happen with that one. So if I put my energy into that one pivotal habit, it's like the go with the flow part of you. I just, mm-hmm. I don't have to work so hard 
for the rest of it. But if I put my energy into hydration or into sleep or into my eating habits, then I'm kind of swimming upstream for all of them. So if you yeah. can identify something that helps you to go with the flow more, for some people that's waking up earlier. Like they'll, I if I get up thinking that, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So what does waking up earlier give you? So I know if I wake up early, that it sets the tone for my whole day. And I am just more productive. Even if I wake up early and don't do anything in that first 30 minutes or whatever it is, mm -hmm. as long as I'm up and having my cup of coffee, I'm a machine really. Like I can get so many more things done in those first mm -hmm. two hours than I sometimes do all day long. And yet I'm not a morning person. So I give in to that non-morningness a lot. And I always have an excuse and there's always a reason, which is part of the reason why my workout hours are normally during school because I don't get up early and do that. Um, so I know if I put my energy and focus into the pivotal habit of waking up early, mm -hmm. it's going to change my life. Um, but then I just, I have to do that. Yeah. I'm you heard it here with you. I'm there <laughs> with you. And that is the bad habit I've gotten into because, you know, when COVID started and, you know, we were kind of giving ourselves these little special treats because we were going through all this crap and you're like vacation okay. life 24 seven. Yeah, yeah. So we kind of mm -hmm. turned it into vacation life because it was spring break and we we're like, oh, we're mm -hmm. all sleeping in spring break. Oh, you're not going back to school. Okay. Well, we'll just make it a little longer spring break. And then, yeah. So these habits have become, I mean, I, I am still usually a sleeper, at least in bed when my son has started school. Like he gets up, gets breakfast, yeah. gets all ready and does his thing, which part of me is like, it's not intentional, but I always liked the responsibility that came with getting myself ready for school because my yeah. mom was already at work by the time mm -hmm. I got up. And so I just felt that that was a good thing for me to be able to be able to get myself ready, not to have someone like putting out my clothes and, you know, getting <laughs> breakfast and whatever. So it, part of it was intentional, but a good chunk of it was laziness too, of just <laughs> um, uh, because I am, I'm not a morning person. I stay up way too late reading at night. So to get that full eight hours that I feel I need means sleep until eight sometimes because mm -hmm. I'm up till yeah. midnight reading. So that has been a very bad habit that mm -hmm. truly it was because you know I had to get up a lot earlier when I was walking a kid to school or having to drive, you know, Zoe, I had to drive Zoe, you know, 45 minutes to school most days last year. And so, yeah, I had to get up. You were up and, and going. To, yeah, mm -hmm. I was really up and going. Um, and I've totally let that slide almost as like a little reward to myself yep. of like, mm -hmm. you're going through this really crappy COVID time. So here's mm -hmm. the one little thing that you get yep. that, you know, not makes it worth it, but that, <laughs> that, you know, is like a little bonus because you're yeah. going through this crap. So, and since we're not, I mean, we're still going through the crap obviously, but, but it's a much different scenario now mm -hmm. and I need mm -hmm. I just need to stop and I don't know Missy maybe we need to be wake wake up buddies that sounds very <laughs> that sounds very Why intimate um, <laughs> some just, accountability on that yes yeah, some accountability yeah. wake up accountability partners yeah well so I have a couple different thoughts on this so so one I would say sleeping in not a very bad habit you said that's a very bad habit I'm gonna I'm gonna just challenge you that seems like a very loving habit. It seems like a very loving way to cope with a tremendous life change. Yes. So I'd say first, before we like, you know, kind of beat ourselves up and how do we break out of this? And I, you know, being lazy and that approach to it, I would, I would encourage you to first say, what was the benefit of sleep? Mm -hmm. Like, let's be grateful for the extra time. You know, I would say that we probably have less circles in our eyes. Our skin might be clear. We might <laughs> yeah. maybe had a little more fun in the bedroom. I don't know. Everybody did different, <laughs> different things, right? No judgment or maybe none, whatever. You do you. But if we, if we look at it from a place of punishment and discipline, we're going to stay in the grind where habits are, uh, I should, I wish, it, it can stay in a really negative mindset. So I hear you loud and clear that feels like you kind of let it go. Mm -hmm. And I, I would just encourage you, is there a way to look at it as that 
this was a special time where you got more sleep, where your son is getting more independent. Is there a way to really yeah, reframe the habits? I mean, there are definitely some bad habits that I'm sure we can all point to. Everybody listening can say, yep, can, yep, that one too. <laughs> um, and the habit of getting enough sleep, I'm just going to say, like, if, if we are getting the sleep we need, we, I don't want us to punish ourselves for that. If we want to mm-hmm. shift our sleep schedule, that is a completely, like, we can be neutral about that. We could say, let's shift from this hours to this hours. But I just want to give you some real love around the fact that you probably needed it. If that was a coping strategy, if that was <laughs> yeah. a little, felt like a little bit of a vacation, you know, we all get to sleep in on vacations and well, let's hope. Um, what, what's, a vaca- <laughs> what's a vacation? What's yeah. a vacation? <laughs> yeah. So, but um, I don't know how that lands for you, but that's, that's something that I was thinking when you were talking is it, it can we come at it from a perspective of, okay, thank you to my body for allowing Mm -hmm. me to sleep. And if if you now have the belief, like Missy said, that that she can just conquer the world if she would just wake up a little earlier, that is a real positive way to, you know, attach ourselves to a habit Mm -hmm. as opposed to, to, you know, looking at it as I've, I've let myself go. I let this happen. Mm -hmm. This is, you know, kind of more of a negative sliding into something. So, um, so that's the difference between punishing ourselves and being hard on ourselves and being, you know, can we look at it in a more loving way? Oh, that's such an incredible way to look at it. I really appreciate that because it does, it makes (laughs) me, it's, it takes away that lazy negative and it's more like, no, that is just how, my body needed to cope during a difficult time. Absolutely. And I guess now that I'm even at a point, because honestly, for a while, I was not even thinking about it. I was not going to feel guilty about like, Mm -hmm. no, I I have the option to do this and I'm going to do it. And, you know, I'm making use of the rest of my day, (laughs) but but I need this right now. But I guess it's a good sign that I'm to the point now where I am in a mindset where like, oh, no, I can I can see that light at the end of the tunnel thing. Life's going to be getting back to normal. So, hey, what let's reexamine what our schedules look like now, mine, mm-hmm. the kids, everybody's, and you know, what makes the most sense that is to make a sure that way the, to spin well, especially it. You like, know, we're just re-examining. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you know, if I'm not around for, if we're not doing the family dinner anymore, for example, then that morning time may end up being the more valuable time that I actually get to see the kids versus yeah. like, mm-hmm. so I have to wait like, okay, they can still be independent and take care of their breakfast, but I can still be present in that time you're there, you're there. and yeah. seeing them and communicating with them mm-hmm. and have, you know, mm-hmm. talking about their days while they yeah. get their stuff together and, and yeah. have their own the responsibility for that. So mm-hmm. it doesn't have to be one or the other. I don't think. Um, Absolutely. So, so Yeah. I like that way of thinking. I like it it a lot. So much better. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there's a, there's a quote. um, I think it's by David Campbell. um, Discipline is remembering what you want. Mm -hmm. So anytime I'm coaching someone and they, you know, are really being hard on themselves or they're saying, I just need some more discipline. I need some accountability. I need, you know, and I'm kind of pounding my fist as I'm doing this. (laughs) It's, you know, when we think that pushing and, and, talking, you know, being negative with ourselves is the way to get what we want. Sometimes it can be just as, just even more powerful, maybe just as powerful, but I would say even more powerful to come from a perspective of love and a perspective of positivity. And Mm -hmm. what am I going for? What do I really want? How can I be compassionate around this? How can I be grateful for the, for what's happening? And it's not all Pollyanna. I mean, I'm really, I mean it when I say this, like this really can be a real powerful way to apply the idea of discipline the mm-hmm. idea of, you know, accountability with just staying super clear. Like if you, for example, on, you know, the getting out of bed, if, if the connection time with your kids, if you were only going to see them from eight to 9 AM or seven to 8 AM, you're, you would be out of bed, mm-hmm. yeah. right? Like if that was, if that became connection time with somebody you loved there, you wouldn't, you wouldn't miss it. Mm-mm. So, so that is, is the way to, to really help ourselves remember if it's really important to us and we can attach 
love and and kind of more aspirational ideas rather than negative self-talk it can be mm-hmm. so much more powerful and and we show up to it so much more loving too yeah yes oh yes all right i heard someone say once or i read it i don't know but essentially that discipline is a false construct it doesn't really exist it is knowing what you want and going after it from that mm-hmm. standpoint, because if we're relying on our discipline, then we are going to fail every time. Every and then time. you start that like negative self-talk of, well, I told myself I was going to exercise every day or wake up earlier, or eat more fruit, yeah. or whatever it is. Why am and I not I didn't doing do it? it? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm a failure and I have no discipline. It's more that I just don't understand what I want and why I want it. It's, I, that you don't understand it or it's not top of mind. So I have yeah. a, I have a really, I mean, I'll tell, share something vulnerable. So I work from home and mm-hmm. my kids would walk themselves home and it never failed. I know exactly what time this is pre COVID they're going to walk in the door. And I know, because I know my little people, they need a lot of physical attention from mom. Mm-hmm. Um, my little one, literally, we used to you know, hold me like a taco is one of the things he would say. And so I've got my, I've got to get my taco arms ready for him. And yet I would be surprised and frustrated when they would walk home because I wasn't quite done with my stuff and I hadn't quite finished. Right. So I knew what I wanted was the connection with my son, but I wasn't, there was to use the word discipline. There wasn't enough discipline around it. I didn't need more grind and negative self-talk, I needed a positive reminder. So I created this, um, I think I said it, the first timer on my phone was 15 minutes before they got home. And it said, the words that came up were time to wind down and get ready for the people. And I call my kids, <laughs> the people, the people. And so I found that that wasn't effective enough. Cause one reminder for, for Jenny Remington is not enough. <laughs> Thank you very much. So five minutes after that, I had another timer that went off and it said agreement. So have you guys read the four agreements? No, no. It's been on my list forever, but I have never read it. I'd love to talk to you guys about that when that comes up on your reading list is so, um, you know, the idea that my kids, we have an unspoken agreement. And so I was reminding myself that the agreement that my kids have is they want a healthy, happy home with a present mama. Mm. Those words reminder to wrap up. And then the agreement, agreement that these that these kids have with me is that they want a present mama. Every time they walked in, I was ready for them because mm. I knew I gave myself a transition. I reminded myself of what I wanted. Of course, I knew I wanted to be present, but the other things, the emails, the just one more thing, the to-do list popped up. So I needed mm-hmm. to give myself two reminders within five minutes of each other (laughs) to actually be able to show up. So, so that's a great example of, we don't have to just bully ourselves into doing whatever it is we want. We can do it from a place of love and inspiration instead Mm -hmm. of that, that grind. So that's, that is such a great way to do that. Cause I, I catch myself in that mind space too, sometimes, but I'm just so curious, like, cause I've got the little taco hugger too, Mm -hmm. but but I know that his habit or the habit I would let him get into is that he could just pop in my office anytime for that Mm -hmm. taco hug. So like, what is the communication or what is the, I don't want to necessarily say, what are the limits on your love? No, the, what are the, (laughs) but what is the expectation that you set? So you're like, okay, when you come home, I'm going to welcome you like this. But that means that, you know, from such a time to such a time, you know, mama needs to get back to it. Like what, Mm -hmm. so to be present doesn't necessarily have to mean to be a hundred percent available whenever their mood hits. So how do you also kind of set that I don't want to say barrier, but you know, those restrictions boundaries. Are, are boundaries. What you're saying Thank is you. boundaries. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What, how do you also, um, you know, appreciate and welcome the taco hugs, but also have that boundary that, okay, mm-hmm. uh, now that I've respected your time and your emotional needs, I need you to respect. Absolutely. This. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I, so boundaries is a great, great topic. And what I would say is it would depend on the age. It would depend Mm -hmm. on how much frequency I would see, you know, so I would want you to be really curious um, because for your listeners with kids of all different ages, it's going to vary. 
um, for, for myself with my kids who are now 10 and 12, they understand that if the glass doors are shut on mom's office and the white machine is going and mom is wagging her finger, <laughs> you don't come into the office. So we've got a few few cues, cues. but if they, yeah. if they need something, they know that literally my door is always open. And that's reasonable with older kids, with littler yeah. kids at home, that can be more difficult. So what yeah. I would say is what they are capable of understanding and boundaries are all about the rules that we have for ourselves, how we communicate them and how we enforce them. Yeah. So, you know, so if we say, I'm sorry, I can't take this right now. Cause I'm in the middle of something, or can you wait? Like, so how we treat someone who violates our boundaries is really <laughs> important. Um, I actually have a Google search from last week. I was looking for one of those velvet ropes that you put like across <laughs> a movie theater. Cause my office has two open doors. Yeah, it's a Mine very small too. office, yeah. but for some reason it has two open doors mm -hmm. that are not closable. And I remember I was doing the Irma Bombeck conference uh, last year and I put caution tape across and I was like, if the caution tape is up, that means I'm in a session. But I was like, I need a more permanent solution than that, just this, you know, Halloween caution tape. So I was like, what about a, like a velvet rope or something that I could hook across the doorway? But yeah, just that visual cue yeah. that says this is not the time. Yeah, I, I have a I sign actually, for my door. Do you? Yeah. Yeah. But I don't always use it. And then I get frustrated with them when they interrupt me. But the sign's not up. Like I trained them to look for the sign. And so now I'm expecting them to read my body language, which is not fair. Like, yeah. just I expect them to understand that I'm busily typing away. But if the yeah. sign's not up, so yeah. I have to remember to put the sign so you, up. So we have to be consistent too. My, yeah. my cue is I have a little white noise machine. I saw this at, at my counselor's office. She had, she had a white little tiny, you know, hockey puck size white mm -hmm. noise machine. So my kids know if the white noise machine is on and I do that because we have tile and it's real echoey. So oh, genius. It, it genius drowns out. So I, I actually keep it on the outside of my door. And so if the white noise machine is on, then I'm in a call and Mm -hmm. You just have, saved me so much. You saved me having to drill these barriers. I was researching pocket doors. That's, no. that's genius. You saved Let's me. Let's add a link. Let's add a link. Yeah, yeah. We're, we have a great, I bet link. we have the same one, that little. It's like a $25. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, yeah. We have a bunch of them from it's, when the kids were babies. I, I don't even have to go shopping. We've, I can, yeah. <laughs> Grab it off the shelf right there. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Okay. That's, that's really oh. genius because I do, I close my bedroom door and like when I'm in here, I close my bedroom door. I close the bathroom doors. I close my closet doors. They're very good about, um, I hear them come in the bedroom door periodically, but when they see the bathroom doors closed, they know what I'm doing. Yeah. Yeah. Whereas typically like I tell them I'm going to record, I'm going to be gone for a while. Text dad, if you need him, I'm not going to pay attention yourselves. to my phone. Like, yeah, figure it out. And they're older. It's not like I have babies, but every once in a while they forget. And so they will come in the bedroom door and they remember when they they're like, oh yeah, she's not available. But yeah. when I'm just working, working, not recording, that's different. Yeah. Different respect oh, I'm for, implementing no this respect. immediately. Yay. Immediately. <laughs> that's a, good, a real game changer. Thank you. It for is that. a game changer. Oh <sighs> yeah. So I have a sort of a random question before we oh. I was going to say, hour. girl, we're, we're, yeah. we can't do another two hour with poor Jenny. <laughs> She's no, got we things to do. <laughs> um, this is seriously just, I mean, it is a selfish question. I just want to hear from someone who's worked with a lot of people who go through transition times. When I'm going through a big transition from school to summer, summer to school or new job, whatever, I physically feel it in my body. Like mm -hmm. I feel achy and tired. And like this week we all got colds. The mask mandate is over. We're back in the world. And Cooties. We're so, yeah, we're still <laughs> wearing our masks a lot of places. In fact, we had a swim meet. It was fully masked this week. But there's also more exposure to people. And uh, my youngest son brought home a cold. And now my older son has it. And I have it. And um, so I have that. I mean, throw that on top of my normal transition feels. And I'm sort of a disaster. Mm -hmm. Is that normal to feel it in here and literally feel sick at times? What I would say is... Our bodies are always giving us information. Okay. So yeah. if when you are in a period of lots of change and lots of transition and you tend to get sick, that's information. 
Mm-hmm. That is information. Is, is it information about what you're eating? Is it information about what you're, you know, what you're taking in, what energy is going out, who you're yeah. exposed to? I would say, yes, it's normal. Different bodies, different people are going to translate it in different ways. Um, yeah. You know, we've all heard stories about people who, you know, are on the road for their jobs and they're on the road, on the road, on the road. And then when they come home, they always get sick. Yeah. Is it that they get that sick be because me. they got sick on the last air, airplane or are they sick because of the adrenaline, you know, the fatigue, right? Yeah. So, um, so what I would say is instead of looking at it as, you know, a problem and your body's failing you or something's happening is how can I listen and what is the information that my body's giving me? And so if you're looking at it from a perspective of your, your body is in going through your family, your community, we're all going through a lot of transition. Well, what is transition? It's change. It's progress. It's shifting. Mm-hmm. It's passing from one to the other. And so if we think of transitions, not just as going from point A to point B, but we can be intentional about how we experience the transition. That yeah. is, I mean, to me, that's where the magic is. So it's like, if the goal is for us to have a really great summer, well, you know, or to, to arrive on the first day of school and having, you know, we did it all, we checked we all did the it. boxes, yeah. we did it. So if all we're focused on is getting to the other side of it, we miss what's in the middle. And we know this, we know this intuitively. Mm-hmm. We hear it from, you know, the wise older women who tell us like, don't blink, yeah. enjoy yeah. it while you so can, fast. you know, all the, it goes so fast. But the reality is, is that every bit of our life is a transition from something to something else. Mm. So if we're constantly focused on what's next, what's next, what's next, we miss what's happening right now. Mm-hmm. And so what I would say is, you know, the fact that you physically feel it when there's a lot of change, when, I mean, my, my thoughts are, how can we ramp up the self-care, the reserves, if you before. can anticipate change right. before? Sometimes we can, like, um, and Missy knows this, I have a back to school, but pre-COVID times, I had a back to school, mom's day out, mom play date on the first day of school. It's a thing I do. Everyone's welcome. Um, And, and I also do it on the last day of school. Like I plan Mm -hmm. to have a play date with ladies on the first day of school. Cause that's, will be the first time that a lot of people have had time to themselves. So how can we listen to what's going on plan Mm -hmm. for if you you know, people who always get sick after a vacation, maybe they need an extra day at home. Yeah. Right. And so how can, instead of trying to squeeze every last minute of it, can we create more space and, and ease in the transition from one thing to the next, to the next. And for me, I think it's a lot of like giving, giving myself that gracefully and not feeling guilty about it. Mm -hmm. Or not feeling any shame, even like saying, I know if I come home from vacation, I need a day where all I'm doing is laundry and resting. Mm -hmm. I need that day. And I, I don't feel bad about it, but I do like saying that out loud just now actually kind of made, I felt it in my body. Yeah. Yeah. Because I thought that's shameful. Like why most people come back from vacation and just pop right back into life. And that's not probably true. That's a story I've told no, myself. No, that's I not guess. true. But that's my favorite day of vacation: coming back and being like really leisurely mm-hmm. and doing laundry and just putting mm-hmm. stuff back together. No, that's my favorite day of vacation. <laughs> that is the vacation. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, I think that you know, I mean, maybe that's something to experiment with: is just building mm-hmm. more transition time between you know whether it's after vacation, after a really busy mm-hmm. busy time period is can you plan more downtime where that the right. goal is to recharge your batteries mm-hmm. and and if you make a habit out of it that can be guilt free yeah. right because do you feel guilty when you feel like you feel terrible and you're in bed do you feel guilty sometimes sometimes, sometimes yeah. yeah so imagine imagine not feeling terrible So if you're going to have guilt either way, this is what I'm getting at. (laughs) You're going to have guilt either way. Why not have it be without the sick in bed? Without feeling yucky. Yeah. Yeah. So, and then later let's work on the guilt. That'll be episode number whatever. (laughs) That's another thing. (laughs) That'll be with the four agreements. So much like Mm -hmm. I give my kid, I have a child who really struggles with change 
and needs windows of time. And we figured it out really early on after messing up royally numerous times with him, like forcing Mm -hmm. him into things and he's crying and we're like, just suck it up. That sounds terrible. But uh, we figured out he needed that. So I built in that buffer for him. I know how to give that to him Mm -hmm. and that he needs time and he needs certain things to make Mm -hmm. his move. And he's needed tools to learn how to do that for himself because he's not a baby anymore. So he has to do that for himself. And um, I need to give that to me, not just to him. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Baby yourself. Yeah. (laughs) And be compassionate because that's, I mean, the fact that you know how to, you can see it in someone you love, right? um, you know, and that, that you don't hold that against them. Right. You know, can you, can you give that same amount of love and space for yourself? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That makes me feel better. Selfish question over. (laughs) (laughs) I didn't know we got to bring our own questions. (laughs) I've got this. Why else do this? (laughs) (laughs) Oh my gosh. Okay. So now, because we are, we're pushing your, we're pushing your time. Yes, we are. How are you on time? You good? I'm good. Um, You know what's? I'm not good on is my battery. So I'm gonna just wander to go plug you in. Can I? Can we walk and talk? Yes. Yes. Yeah. We walk and talk. Get I love a, it. Get a tour of. I my... love it. I feel like we're on a TV show, like where they do the moving camera thing, the single camera. <laughs> I love it. Keep okay. going. Keep going. Are you sure? Because this is gonna be a, a question for you. Well, they're all questions for you, but this one's specific to your coaching and stuff. So yeah. before we go to the look, listen, learns, we want to make sure we know what's going on with your coaching this summer. Are there any programs or anything that listeners should be aware of, and where can they find out about them? So thanks for asking that. Um, So over the past year, I've been focused on both group coaching and private coaching. So this summer, I'm really focusing just on on my private coaching clients. Mm -hmm. So if anybody's interested in having the support of a coach as they go after some big goals, if they're in the middle of a big transition period, then I'd I'd love to work with people on those kinds of projects. And um, starting in the fall, I'll be doing my self-care circle. Those will be starting back up again. So those are something I offer in the spring and the fall. Great. All right. And then your website again is the Jenny Remington with one M. One M. And Jenny with a Y. <laughs> Jenny with a Y. Jenny with a Y. Jenny with one a y. M. <laughs> um, and so yeah, to be able to find you. And Jenny of course Remington. we will we will have links to all of that on the yeah, and I encourage everybody to sign up for your newsletter too. You have a good newsletter, like useful oh, information. Thanks and succinct and so yeah I love it I love I love writing and um you know I get I've actually got a few new ideas just from our conversation today so thank you for that good (laughs) oh wonderful well we got lots of ideas too I'm gonna go dig up that sound machine as soon as we close the shop here uh but yes so now I guess it's time for look listen learn and now since you you're an old pro here Jenny you know what the look listen learns all about but just for our listeners to learn a little bit more about you and so yeah is there anything that you've been look, listen, learning this week? Yeah. So I, there's a couple I had to, I had to chop it down, but I might be late to the party or I am late to the party. Have you guys seen the show Ted Lasso? Yes. yes we love Ted Lasso. Love okay. Ted. So just the fact that he's like such a positive person, he's a coach and it's just, <laughs> I mean, the fish out of water story. So I, we are late to the party, but, um, uh, just loving it. So I'm on my second round of watching that. I, I think that I could just watch positive, positive sitcoms for the rest of my life. Like, so yeah. that's my, it was that's the my look. perfect show for pandemic time because it just was so uplifting, gave me hope for people. Mm-hmm. Everything about it was just perfection. Mm-hmm. Love, yep. love, 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 love. Yeah, yeah, we went through it twice too. Yeah, we needed it. Did you? We I, need to go through yeah. it again. We've only done it once. <laughs> we did. So I'm late to the party, but that's, that's one of them. Oh, good. Well, at least you're at the party. That's all that counts. Looking What's your at... other? I think Jenny oh, had another Oh, one. did you have two of them? Yeah. I had, but that was my look. Yeah. yeah. So my learn it, but I don't know if it's a, yeah, it's probably a learn. Um, so I've gotten into bullet journaling after years of resistance, years yes. and years. So I've experimented with all kinds of journals. And that's a question I get a lot, especially at the beginning of the year is what kind of planner do you use? What do you like? What like should it. I use? looking for advice. And I mean, it's, they're so personal. So I've tried tons of different ones. So my current experiment is in bullet journaling and it's, um, it's still an experiment, 
I'm learning. <laughs> I had not having structure around like, this is what you put on this page um, is a little new for me. Um, so it's an act of creativity too. But what I always do is suspend the judgment around it for a while. So that's what I'm learning right now is some bullet journaling creativity. I can't so wait to hear back to let on myself that. do it. Well, you know what? I'm loving, you know, I love my Luke turn. What is it called? The Luke term 1917. Oh, yeah. But I keep on having the problem where I'll do like a to do list. And then as I take notes on other stuff, like if I have a board meeting or something, and then my to do list is like five pages away. And I was going to show mm. you this great thing I got, but then I ripped it up for it. We had our tipsy ellipses episode last night. <laughs> and we did like a, a well, we can't call it the newlywed game because it involved our brothers. It was siblings. <laughs> <laughs> but also, one of the answers uh, was Turkey in Japan, apparently. Um, <laughs> but what I had torn up to write my answers on is actually a giant post-it. So it fills almost the whole hmm. page. So then I put my to-do on that. And then it's portable. You can move it. Can so, move. yes. So it's always present. Genius on whatever page I have. That's a great and solution. I think, th I think that is gonna be working for me. Um, so it only made it, the one to-do list that I did for myself, I ripped into a bunch of pieces for our show last night. <laughs> but I think it's, it will be a good solution. So I'll report back on that too, when you report back on your bullet journaling. Yeah. That's good. And then you've been listening, yeah. have you been listening to something too? So listening, it's a little, it's a little woo woo, but I've really been listening to my body and tracking my oh. cycle and paying attention to the moon and super woo woo. But I feel like I'm getting a lot of information about like paying attention to what my energy is based on what's happening here right. and uh -huh. out there. So um, I don't know. That's what I was when the question of listening, it's fascinating to just think about listening deeply to what's going on in your body. So Oh, I love that. And yeah, we don't really give ourselves that time that often. Yes. Yeah. So how are you tracking it? Like I like my cycle cycle just because I am getting away from the cycle, but I'm <laughs> of that age. I am. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so my, my mm -hmm. gynecologist has me using this app called, I don't know. Oh, it's actually clue, but I call it clueless because it'll be like, it's been 120 days since your last period. Your period begins tomorrow. I'm like, no, it doesn't. It doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> you are so I'm like, you should be saying, go see your doctor, not your period begins tomorrow. But anyway, um, but so I use that app, but it does have other things where you can do like your mood and other things that you can chart on there. Are you doing something similar or is yours more just writing it down? I actually did a bullet journal on it. Um, so yeah, so I created, that was like the first spread I did in a bullet journal, but kind of, I'm not tracking my mood every day. But I saw a lot of those and I decided, you know, I have so many apps and I'm trying to have less screen time, less time with my phone mm -hmm. in my hand. So right now I'm just tracking those two things, the my cycle and the moon and trying to just see if there's a pattern. And it seems like there's not. It seems <laughs> like we are all, I mean, the moon is consistent. The moon does her thing. <laughs> Yeah. Every day. Um, Jenny's body does not. So um, just looking at, okay, what's, what is energetically happening with me when, when I'm in this phase of my cycle. So trying yeah. to just pay attention. So I haven't gotten so far as tracking my, you know, my mood also because I find my mood changes a lot throughout the day. You right. know, those That's like smiley face, thinking. frowning face, which is your mood. Yeah. It's like, all of the above. So, <laughs> yeah. so those never yeah. really suited me. Um, mm -mm. you know, so it's more of a kind of a whole, I'm trying to have more of a holistic and less reactive, like right now, right now, how am I feeling? So mm -hmm. interesting. Okay. I love Super that. Cool. Yes. Listening to it. We all need to be listening yeah. to our bodies a little more. I know that's you. I just wrote down another little note. I'm like, hey, <laughs> you should track this. I, mean, I can't, yes. I don't have a cycle anymore, but I can track other things mystery it is it, for something that should you know should be so yeah. clear to us that it, so many of us me included which is why I'm starting to trying to pay attention to it it's just yeah just a thing that happens to us instead of a part of the system that we're in mm -hmm. right right yeah and it happens for most people it happens every month for a really long time and mm -hmm. it's still like oh wow that's weird <laughs> Shocking news. <laughs> yeah. So for most people, I actually do really recommend that clue app. It was been really helpful and even like Good. 
I mean, oh, our friend, our friend Wendy Ahrens went viral with a tweet that like was heard around the world. I think it's been translated now Seriously. about this idea that even if you went into the doctor like mauled by a dragon, whatever, the first thing they would ask is when was the first date of your last period, mm -hmm. um, which I think it really hit. A, it hit a note because there were so many women who have you're like your doctor might forget some things but they should know that you've had a hysterectomy like that right. should be in their notes when they welcome but you I have into been the asked, office like, but yes are you and, menstruating well no yeah so it's all <laughs> these women who are like no wonder our health is not being given the attention that it's supposed to our doctors aren't even paying attention to or the medical mm -hmm. community at large is not valuing women's health to the point that they even Think it's important no. to note that yeah. they've had a hysterectomy um so yes i think it did it hit a note in many different ways but mm -hmm. in my way is that i never could remember what the date was and so now i have this app i'm like i do know i do know when it was gold star for you yes <laughs> yeah okay well i i have been looking at two things there yeah. and i'll be quick because i know we're getting getting kind of late here but um i mentioned this yesterday missy the how to be a person oh, yeah. book um, Catherine book. newman Whoops. so this is going to essentially be my kids summer camp um it is 65 hugely useful super important skills to learn before you've grown up and it is i think it's meant for little little kids but i think there's some things in here that even i don't know exactly how to do but yeah. um I mean, it's stuff like, especially if your kid's going away to college, like get out of stain, how to set the table, how to boil an egg, yeah. how to make a bed, how do you hand wash dishes? I think I was still in college before I realized that it was really important to use soap when you hand wash dishes. <laughs> like I would just rinse them real good. Like, Sorry for any of my roommates. I got your mom sick. coming home from work and you're like, I've done yeah. the dishes, but little did she know you just <laughs> ran no water soap. over them. <laughs> um how to make a phone call we we've talked much about how my children just answer the phone and heavy breathe until you have some type of interaction i love the one about how to address an envelope i mean Huge. really how many times do our kids, how. i bet there's a lot of 16 year olds out there that if you gave them an envelope they would be like where's the stamp go so oh, i mean so we're we had just that gonna, question recently we're going to do one a day. So there's 65 of them. It's not even going to take the whole summer. Mm -hmm. We're going to take one a day, make sure that the kids know the basics. But in the idea of how to be, how to be people, I just got this book because uh, Julie Lithcott Hames is going to be a guest in a couple oh, months. Cool. Um, so I wanted to make sure the new book, uh, Your Turn, How to Be an Adult. So <laughs> a lot of people probably know her from, oh, I didn't even bring that book. up. Oh, no, I do have that book here. But most people know her as from um, how to raise an adult. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But this is more of like, okay, you're not raising the adult. You are the adult. Um, I think it's mostly intended for like college graduation gift or, you know, young adult first mm -hmm. apartment or whatever. But I would argue that there's a lot of us 50 year olds who are still uh, needing the lessons in this book. And so we're so excited to be talking to her about this. I am like very just a few pages into it um but we'll be talking a lot more about that too so that's what i've been looking at sweet what about you missy so um so i put this on my list today specifically because i knew we were talking about habits and i knew sleep was something that i have been thinking a lot about so i got a hatch clock do either of you have a hatch or know a hatch i do not even know what this is does it so like break open I know. I know. It sounds like it should. It's called the Hatch Restore Sleep Assistant. And we'll post a picture because it's so cute. It's this really cute little half moon looking clock. Um, but it has all these settings where you can like turn on a reading lamp that's a certain color that sort of sets your body to like now I'm reading. Now I'm winding down and reading. Mm. And then when you turn that off, it plays a sleep story or a sound or whatever it is you want i have yet to make it through a sleep story i hit it to play a sleep story and i sometimes i can't hear because my roommate snores sometimes <laughs> and my four-legged roommates occasionally are noisy so sometimes i can't really hear the sleep story but on the occasions i can hear it or have heard it i fall asleep like it really does work and then as soon as the sleep story is over you can have it play like white noise and um, I don't like a ton of white noise, but it's a low level that's just enough. And it's the signal to my body that we're sleeping. Right. Um, I love it. 
it's so cool. I'm just really started to play with it and use it, but I think it's going to be a handy tool. Um, Are the sleep and then you can stories also... like age specific? I'm wondering, my son has always had trouble falling asleep. I'm wondering. I think there's a variety. I haven't done too deep a dive into what's okay. available, but there it does seem like I have it on a, um, it just rotates and picks one, like it's in a theme and then it picks them for me. So okay. I'm in like a fictional sleep story rotation right now, but honestly, Not I don't true know crime. if they're okay for some, because... <laughs> As I slept through it. Yeah. yeah. I'm sleeping right through them. Um, and it also turns off, I have it set. So between, I think it's between 11 and six that I have it set. The numbers don't illuminate. Um, so, cause I'm really bad about waking up in the night and being like, it's 3 a.m. I can get this much more sleep or, you know, I'm watching yes. the clock. Mm-hmm. And so now if I want to know what time it is, I have to physically sit up, lean over and look at my husband's clock. And that's a lot of work. And so I'm not <laughs> going to do that. It's um, not worth it. It's not worth it. I mean, I have to really want to know for some reason. And so now if I wake up in the night and the numbers aren't illuminated, I just think, well, still my time. <laughs> yeah. Not time to get up. Good. Yeah. So it's a super cool little tool and I'm hoping that it it helps on my journey to being more consistent with my sleep. Like everything else, I have to use it to make it work, but I think it's, I think it's good. Um, And then super quickly, I won't do a whole thing because we already talked about it, but when Suzanne Brown was on, she talked about patchology eye patches. Oh yeah. And I'm not a great ad for them today because I have a cold, but they (laughs) really are good. They, they are only on like five minutes, which a lot of things want you to leave them on 15 to 20 minutes. They go on and they stay on. They don't slide down your face. I hate that when those eye gels start, you know, they're down here. Um, they go on and they stay on and they, you can leave them longer than five, but they work in five minutes. And I bought like a sample pack just to see what I thought. And I love yeah. them. I'm buying the whole thing. So okay. Patchology. That's a yeah. two for two recommendation. Yeah. <laughs> Suzanne talked about it and look, listen, learn. I thought I'd just circle back and say, yes, definitely worth the purchase. <laughs> that is good to know. Okay. Oh, I'm right. so excited about both of those things. I haven't heard of, well, I've heard of the pathology. I haven't heard of the little, uh, I want to call it the hatch. egg now. What's it? Hatch. I know. There you go. I don't know. I don't know why it's called hatch. It probably says somewhere in the literature and I just okay. overlooked it, but it's cute and cool. I love it. Very cool. Oh, look at all these things I get to go do today. I'm going to go, I could get all my electronical things. Well, you could even, yeah. could you use that as your sound machine for the office? If you're, if someone decides to use that as a clue, or we'll just set the sleep story. And then while they're coming to your office, they'll just fall into a deep sleep. <laughs> <laughs> they can't even bother you. If only. <laughs> if only. Yeah. Yeah. I'm feeling very sleepy now. <laughs> All right. Well, oh, this has been so amazing. I always know it's going to be amazing when we're talking to Jenny, but so much good information today and so perfectly timed (laughs) for everything that I need. So it's just all hitting the right, hitting the right notes today. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your time and your expertise and your wisdom. And oh yeah, I think everybody's going to be needing this too. Yep. Well, thanks. I could talk all day about this kind of stuff. I love it. So thanks for the invitation and for the, sure. the fun, fun conversation. Thank you so much. Have Jenny. a good rest really of your day. Your Happy summer. Right. Thank you. Thanks guys. Thank you so much for joining us for the mom and dot, dot, dot podcast. We hope you enjoyed the show today. And if you know someone else who could benefit from today's episode, be sure to share it with them. Also, please subscribe and rate us wherever you listen to podcasts. You can find links to all the things we discussed today in the show notes over at our website, momandpodcast.com with the A-N-D spelled out. In between shows, you can find us at the socials, including our private mom and community Facebook group. You can find links to the group, all of our socials, and our questions and comments section over at our website, momandpodcast.com. Thank you so much for your support. We appreciate you so much. Now go out there and make your ellipses count.